Hello and welcome to my coverage of the 2023 Tour Divide. We're now into the third day of the race and most of the pack is making its way across the um, Canadian border um, and it's heading into Montana. Um, so let's go and have a little look and see what's been going on in the world of the Tour Divide. Um, so by, by popular demand, um, most people aren't really too interested in what's going on at the front of the race. They are more worried about what's going on with Mira La Pera. Um, of course, if you don't know, Mira is is the dog, and she's riding with her owner John. And um, as we can see, she's uh, looks like she's having a really great time. Um, so yeah, so they just crossed into the states. It looks like they'll be crossing Whitefish Divide today. And if I click this video, he does. Work. He does all the work, and you get all the recognition. <laughs> <laughs> all the love there oh yeah. thanks Dennis I appreciate that oh, that's no awesome problem. Enjoy. <laughs> and that is one very happy dog I think she looks like she's having a great time um so yeah they're they're um they're doing it together um John is is riding along and um I think I think um Mira's in a trailer um I'm, I'm gonna do a bike check video in a couple of days time so I'll make sure I feature those guys um because it's probably the uh, the story that everyone is uh, most interested in because um <laughs> well we all love dogs um certainly I do Back to the the main race. So um, we've we, we've had uh, Justina Slavica and Ulrich Bartholomew's really pushing the pace at the front. Um, as you can see, overnight, um, that, so they'll be heading into the probably the third night of the race now. And Ulrich has got himself ahead of Mike Hall's dot. So Mike Hall, um, the late Mike Hall, set the record uh, thirteen days, twenty just under twenty three hours back in twenty sixteen, and. Ulrich has got himself ahead of that pace at the moment. I wouldn't read too much into it right now. Um, I believe that Mike stopped in and around Hellander for a quite a big sleep um, when he set the record. He pushed it early, pushed the sleep, and then had a, a big catch up. And it looks like Ulrich hasn't stopped. So he's on Lava Mountain at the moment. And um, I mean, it's a, it's a little bit of a slower section. Um, quite a long climb. There's a, there's a bit of a climb out of Helena, then you're onto Lava Mountain. Quite a long section, and um, it's kind of a bit single tracky at the top there. Uh, Ulrich isn't fantastic off road. I think he'd be the first to kind of acknowledge that, and um, so I think he, he may slow a little bit. Um, but yeah, he's got to stop at some point. Um, if we look at the race flow up here, he's still not properly stopped. Um, so you know, there's a stop here. He had a bit of a sleep the other night, but he's still not stopped on night three. Um, Justinus has now stopped and you know I think that's probably a sensible call by him um, if you're wondering where Justinus slept in uh, Helena and you thought maybe he has decided to sleep in a um, hotel American holiday or something. <laughs> no he hasn't he's sleeping in someone's door <laughs> stairwell <laughs> so yeah Justinus had a little sleep last night um, and, and Ulrich seems to have got the gap. Um, but I wouldn't read too much into it. Um, Jens van Roost, he's made quite a nice steady um, sort of comeback, I, I guess. He's just rode, ridden consistently. And then we've got that group, Chris Burkard, Ted King, Joe Nation, you know, guys like Ezra, Caleb, and of course, Lael. They're, they're kind of floating around now. They're not, they're not too far back. They're all in this area here. Um, Ulrich is pushing it hard. He's a strong guy. He's very determined. Um, but the Tour Divide is so long. And I, I do wonder if um, if it's going to be sustainable or not. Um, if we look at the leaderboard, um, there's a really interesting new feature, the run rest option. And it basically just gives you all the stats and stuff. And you can see Ulrich's moving average speed, 10.8 miles an hour. Eustinus is actually moving faster now, 10.9 miles an hour, or, or, or certainly has been. Jens, he's riding the same speed as Ulrich. Um, Tom Schwimberger. Now, I don't know an awful lot about Tom, but I believe he's he's um, he's won a couple of the like the shorter, the shorter long races in states like Stagecoach 400. Um, maybe a bit more unproven over the long distance. Um, 11 miles an hour. He's riding quicker. Chris Burkhardt, he's slowed a little bit now. Then you got guys like Joe Nation and Ted King. Now Ted King, he's the fastest guy in the field without doubt at the moment just under 30 miles an hour, but he's taking really long um, uh, stops. Joe King, he's been stopping a lot for burgers and stuff. If you look at his Instagram, you see a lot of a lot of stopping from him. Incidentally, um, 
Joe used to race EWS, that's the Enduro World Series, is an Enduro rider, and you can see the maximum average, the maximum speed hit, 30.9 miles an hour. That is a lot faster than anyone else. So um, yeah, Enduro skills most definitely count. Um, obviously, there's not too much single track here, but I'd, I'd expect over Lava Mountain, uh, like I said, we'll go into that in a second, there, there's, there's some good techie riding down there. Um, he'll make up time on there without a doubt. And so yeah, and then we've got the run here. So that's basically the percentage of time moving. So Ulrich, he basically has been riding longer than anyone else. Justinus has backed off a bit now. And then you've got Jens, he's 90% run time. And then the others drop off quite significantly. Um, so yeah, I mean, time will tell. Do you sleep? It's, it's the age old question of Tour Divide. Do you sleep more and ride faster during the day? Or do you ride more and sleep less? And you know, where does that meet with, with the average speeds? Um, it's going to be very interesting to see um, you know what happens um, in the rest of the field there's it's, it's starting to become a little bit clearer now and we're getting quite a nice race uh, like in the in the women's race so Lael is still uh, way way ahead well not not that far to be honest but she's she's ahead um, as you can see let me just pick Lael out I can't find it <laughs> Leo, there we go, add her on the favorites. So they, they, they can see Leo, um, and she's a little bit behind her her own record. Um, so Leo has the women's record, uh, 15 days, 10 hours. Um, so yeah, she's, but she's doing a solid pace. So she's, you can see a record dot under there. So Joe Nation and Ted King. Again, these are the guys that are stopping but riding faster than everyone else. They are in Lincoln, there's a little motel there. I've stayed there myself in 2019. So they'll be resting and they'll be riding hard um, and probably setting off early in the morning. Lael, just before, she's still rolling tonight. Maybe she's gonna try and get to Lincoln. She's on um, uh, Richmond Peak at the moment. Um, again, I'll dig into that shortly on, on the route. Um, but yeah, she's, she's established a bit of a gap now. Um, and then behind, we've got quite a nice grouping of of women who are chasing her down. Um, so Sasha Dowell, Alexandra Huchin, again, she's the women's single speed record holder. You can see her single speed dot record dot here. So she's she's a little bit down on what she can do, but we know the conditions were quite bad up north. Uh, April Drange, she's, um, she actually finished the Rhino run in South Africa and Namibia last year, a particularly tough and long race, um, a little bit shorter than divide, but probably a lot more remote so she can certainly do a thing and Marie Soleil Blaise I think I've said that right apologies Marie if I've butchered your name um, she's actually um, pro a pro rider um, and again looks like she sped up she, she had a bit of a slow start maybe maybe the mud and stuff slowed her down in the first part um, but she looks like she's really motoring so keep an eye on Marie um, to see where she gets to. And also, um, if you're interested in finding more out about Marie, there's um, there's a really cool video she put on YouTube um, just introducing herself and her story. Hello, my name is Marie Soleil. I'm from Quebec, Canada. And uh, this coming June, I'm going to be racing. So yeah, apologies, my laptop can't really keep up with this at the moment. But um, yeah, I'll put the link to that in the in the, in the uh, description below because um, it's, it's really interesting just, just hearing about her story and why she's at the Tour Divide and how she's prepared for the Tour Divide. Um, so yeah, I, I shall put that link below. Um, big shout out to the, 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 the guys that are helping me make this happen. You may notice I have a fancy new microphone today, so you're not gonna hear the, uh, the mic rubbing on my beard. Um, that's thanks to Holy Fat. They've, they've sponsored this, um, this coverage of the Tour Divide. So they make energy bars and nut butters. Um, I've been using them most of this year. Um, basically low carb, but um, like loads of really good energy in, in the way of um, fats. Um, and they also make these drink sachets, electrolyte stuff. Um, and again, I've had these in my bags for various events this year. Um, they're, they're really good. I used them on the Highland Trail 550 a few weeks back. Um, I'll put the link down below for the, the video I did on nutrition and that, just see how I use them. Maybe take a look at their website. Um, but yeah, thanks to those guys for helping me make this happen. Right, let's let's go on to the route. And just, uh, you know, we've, we've, we've touched on what's happening in the race. Let's just have a look and see, see where these guys are actually riding. So I'm on the Ride with GPS, um, at their Tour Divide 2023, um, route 
um, file and they've got all these amazing points of interest uh, which I'm going to remove for now this is uh, Sarah Swallow put this together she rode the event um, 2022 or 2021 I think um, so yeah she recorded all the like the water points and food points and things like that so it's a really really good resource when we covered that yesterday we talked about white dish, whitefish divide and red meadow, red meadow lake um, so yeah so the riders now they get get towards Helena so Helena is probably the first big town you get to in Montana um, it's quite remote in this section here between um, you know whitefish and Columbia Falls they're they're kind of like I think it's a, very much a holiday region in the area um, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments if anyone um, knows any difference but it's quite a remote area um, and this track here is is really quite remote um, there's not an awful lot in the way of resupply uh, until you get to Avando crossing Richmond Peak which you can see um, will be this little peak here on the um, on the map I believe it'll be a bit further up no, it'd be that that be Richmond Peak there. Um, so Richmond Peak is um, it's kind of like an interesting climb. It's quite high up, um, but it's north facing, so you can get quite bad weather. So last year um, there was quite a lot of snow up there. So as you can see, it's, it's quite a narrow track. Um, there's some sketchy sections if it is snowy, where you're kind of like leaning off this this vertical kind of bank of snow almost. Um, th these photos are courtesy of Chris Ellison actually he, he did the event last year um, and he, he runs the Dales Divide in the UK does some really good stuff um, basically grassroots bikepacking much like the Tour Divide on a smaller scale so yeah big shout out to Chris um, so yeah Richmond Peak um, it sounds like it was clear this year I read it in 2019 and it was it was clear um, a little bit of single track over the top but the Divide doesn't have much in the way of actual proper mountain biking single track it is mainly dirt roads um, so yeah it's nothing too much to worry about uh, then you drop into Avando this is a very small town but they do really welcome the divide riders so I got here on the second night last year I believe um, they have like a little like TP and a, a horse cart in the town square um, so I got there with Manu Catrus we got in about midnight and we just slept there um, and then pushed over these two passes here uh, I think it's Huckleberry Pass into Lincoln get a good resupply in Lincoln and then you're kind of you're on this long section here there's a few passes it's nothing kind of like extreme but you're just getting you're getting higher and higher if you look at the um, the, the profile you're starting to get over 5,000 feet consistently so that's going to start making a difference to you especially if you've come down from sea level um, and into Helena which is kind of like a I guess a city a small city and then you're on to Lava Mountain so if we look at the tracker, you can see uh, Justina stayed in Helena last night. This is where I'm pretty sure Mike stopped on his record run for a sleep. I think there might be a lodge down here somewhere where, where he stopped. And, and Ulrich has just carried on. So he's going up Lava Mountain. So if we have a little look, um, Lava Mountain is, is quite a high, high climb. You can see it's, it's really kind of going up. Um, to 7,000 foot here so we're making quite a bit of altitude and basically it's quite a long wide open like dirt track on the way up you could you could you could drive up it fairly easily um, it really wouldn't be too much of an issue um, and then near the top you're, you're getting into kind of like four-wheel drive tracks it's quite techy and rough um, it's not it's not technical mountain biking by any means but it could be um, something that could catch you out you know if you were tired I think uh, 20, 2018 when Lewis Sidor won I think Richard Dunnett was a guy who was up there um, and he he had a few issues he came a cropper up there um, so yeah it's something to look out for and if you're not as proficient on a mountain bike it's, for example Ulrich I think he's he, he'd pretty much admit he's he's not really a mountain biker it might slow you down a little bit um, guys like Joe Nation they're gonna absolutely nail that without a doubt so he'll I'd expect to see a lot of time coming up there um, and then you gradually there's a few little passes you roll into Butte and Butte is kind of again it's a key it's a key resupply on the Tour Divide um, so just to put it in perspective last year um, riding with Manu we stopped in Evando, Evando and we got to Butte about one in the morning so that's that's a solid day's ride you know starting at three in the morning getting in at midnight um, certainly at the pace I was going 
maybe Yorick might do it a little bit quicker, but he's got to stop at some point. It's going to be interesting to see um, see how he gets on and you know see how this high pace is going to affect him. Um, moving on, there's a, a few other little stories. So further down the pack, you know the stories are starting to come out a little bit now. Now that everyone's in the states and getting probably slowing down a bit and spending more time on their phones. Stephen Leharic, he's a French rider. So you may remember that he was kind of there or thereabouts in the first couple of days, but he's really dropped off. Um, and essentially what happened was he he got stuck at the border. So um, obviously he crossed from Canada into the USA. Unfortunately for Ryan, he's uh, he went to, he's been to Iran in the last few years. So he had an Iran stamp, visa stamp in his passport and tried to cross into the United States. Now, um, <laughs> without offending anyone from the States, you know, as a European, you feel pretty intimidated when, you're, when, you, when you fly into the USA and, uh, you know, get questioned and you, you feel guilty before you've even started and you know full well you've got nothing to, to worry about. Um, Stephen's got a, an Iranian stamp in his passport. It took him four hours to get through. He got questioned, you know, quite heavily apparently. Um, but they they did uh, let him through. Um, I have heard before that people have been refused with Iranian stamps in their passport. So I guess Stephen's quite quite lucky. And in the grand scheme of things, four hours is not going to cost you an awful lot on the Tour Divide. You can see he's moving straight back up um, and getting getting in the mix again. And who else have we got? Um, so yeah, we 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 touched on April. Um, she's she's living the Tour Divide dream. She has spent her first night in a pit toilet. Um, that's the luxury accommodation you find on the Tour Divide um, and you get rewarded with views like that now that looks like it's um, when you cross uh, Whitefish Divide on the kind of the, the road out the back before you head over Red Meadow it looks very much like that um, it's a really beautiful part of the world um, yeah and it's grizzly bear habitat there seems to be quite a lot of bear sightings this year um, which brings me on to Steve Halligan he had a, he had a standoff with a grizzly um, had to wait 15 minutes for him to move off the road and that's a big old bear um, now I don't know why there's there's been so many sightings this year maybe someone can inform me in the comments who's who's who knows more about it or is local um, certainly 2022 I saw quite a lot of bears I think I saw 10 bears over the course of, of my time on the race I, I didn't finish but you know in that first half I, which is bear country I saw quite a lot um, there was quite a lot of snow and I, from what I gather that when there's a lot of snow up high obviously it's harder for the the bears to feed so they come down lower and and that's when you get the interfaces um with humans um if anyone knows any different i'd be very very interested to to hear about those reasons um so yeah i think that is pretty much my update for today um let me turn april's instagram off um yes yeah, it's, it's uh it's going to be an interesting to see how the race develops as, as i keep on saying the women's race looks like it's it's really brewing up into something quite interesting to see the men's race i mean uber's going super hard um i don't know I, I just think it's a little bit too good to be true at the moment um if i'm proven wrong then i'll hand, hold my hands up but i just know how fast mike's record is uh 2019 we had a really fast year perfect conditions banging tailwind and i was kind of a little bit behind mike's pace but you know the front of the race was pushing it at, at that pace and it's fast man it's really fast so Ulrich is motoring without a doubt so is Justinus can they keep it up who knows um well join me tomorrow for my day four update um thank you so much to everyone that's supported this uh, it's taken me aback a little bit about how many comments I'm getting I'm trying to keep on top of them but I'm struggling um so 